In this one, we're gonna talk about custom views. So if you still didn't get this, your application visually consists of a window, maybe multiple windows, and there are multiple views, or sometimes just a single view inside a window. In this module, I want to create a custom view, something that is not part of Cocoa, but something that we just want to invent. For this, we're going to create a subclass of NSView, and NSView is just generic view. It's something like NSObject for classes, and NSView is that generic father for views. There are multiple subclasses of NSView we worked with already. So most of the stuff like a button, a text field, the color well, scroll view, the table, that all are examples of subclasses of NSView. Some views could be inside other views, and view is just a, rec a rectangle, and that rectangle handles the mouse events, it can also handle keyboard events inside, it can have views inside itself, so there might be multiple views within one another, and the window is not a view, the window is that container for views. So here you can see an example of a window having one NS view, which is the generic view for the window. So the whole view inside the window, it always is there and it's called the content view. Inside we have an NS box, which is this gray-ish area. So inside the NS box we have a button and a text field, those two. And inside this content view we have also the color well. So the color well and this box is on the same level and inside the box we have two more views. So all of those are examples of subclasses of NS view. So before we go to this slide, let's create a new project and let's create a custom view inside that project. So of course, we want a new Cocoa application and let's call it somehow the, the green. And we don't need unit tests, we don't need core data and we don't need document-based application. So we just need a simple Cocoa application with a single window. Let's save it somewhere. And now we want to create a new class because, well, we need to create a subclass. So for that, we need a new file. Go to new file. And in Cocoa, let's select Objective-C class. And we're going to call it stretch view. And it should be subclass of NS view. I have it here because I did it before, but you might have an S object. Don't forget, this should be NS view. And hit next, save it by default, same place. Okay, so since this is a subclass of NSView, in my H file, in my actual M file, I have draw rect. And I have it by default, and this is where drawing of my view is going to. And by default, I don't have anything, so if I run my application, I won't see anything, not only because I don't have anything in this line, but also because I don't have this view anywhere on my interface. So if I go to my interface, I can see my window, I won't see my view in any way. So I want to put my view in there. But you will not find this view in this uh, collection of the, the object library because it's not a standard view, we just created it. For this, I want to use the object libraries custom view element. So this is custom view, put it somewhere like so. And I want to select in here, the class of this would be my stretch view. So now this is a stretch view. This is the view that we just created. And again, I can make it like this, but it won't actually be visible. We don't have anything drawn. So let's just make it 
green rectangle. So I can delete this comment and say ns rect and call it bounce. This would be the bounce of my application, uh, on, of my uh, filling. And I want it to be the bounce of the actual and the actual view. So let's make it self bounce. And now go and a color and get uh, yellow color. Uh, there's no yellow, but uh, I don't know, green color. And get set. And we're gonna use, oh yeah, I made a mistake. I'm gonna use NS Bezier path, make it fill my rectangle. And this is something you would probably use to, uh, yeah, another mistake. This is something you would probably use to make lines and uh, fill those lines with colors. Okay, so if I run my application now, I will just see, hopefully, a stupid green rectangle. But this thing is not a part of uh, any framework. We just created it. So if you try to resize this window, you will see that the view is resized as well. It takes, it always leaves this constant margin, but it stretches as we, as we do this. This is because the auto layout is on. So if I go to my window here, you will see use auto layout, it's on. And if I put, if I select this and go to uh, size inspector, you will see that there are different uh, constraints. And those just set what is the constant margin that should be in there. And we can make it like this and this, is still going to resize with the window. So this is a new thing, and I think this, this came in Xcode 4.5. And uh, I want to get rid of it, because I don't really like it, but you might, just in case you don't. If you deselect use auto layout, and I'll go back to this size inspector, you will see a different picture. You will actually see and you will be able to set the behavior of auto sizing. So those red lines, when I click them, they become red, means for those four outside ones, if it's red, it's not allowed to be changed. So if it's red, it will stick, and this distance will not change ever. If the inside is red, that means either the height or the width or both of them will change. So if we have everything selected, this means it will just actually show it in this animation. So if I make it like this, that means it won't be able to change. If I make it like this, it will stay there. So I can just run it like this, and you will see that it runs, and it looks like it fills everything. If I run it like this, but if I change the window, it will just stay in the same place. Okay, well, this is fine, but I want to have something more, I don't know, uh, colorful. So let's add a few other things to, uh, to this custom view. Let's use this Bezier path and create random points and create a line that connects random points on my view. So let's go to stretch view.h to the h file and create a new variable for my Bezier path because I I want to use it later. So Bezier path and call it path. And I want to create uh, a method that returns a random point on my view, not just random number, an exact point within the bounds of my view. So it will return ns point and ns point is not a class so the that won't be an object this will be random point 
and this point is a structure. So it's a simple C structure, and this is the time to get to this slide. There are different structures used for simple graphics in Cocoa. So NS rectangle, NS point, NS range, NS size are just simple C structures. And don't forget, you don't need to create pointers to them. Those are just simple collection of variables. And this is how NS rectangle looks like. You have an origin point, and you have the size, which is diagonal, and you have the height and the width, which are float. So let's implement that. But before we go to random point, let's actually do this. This is called when it, this view is initialized. So this is actually the first, first thing that is being executed when we have our view initialized. And by default, we have this usual stuff where we uh, ask the superclass to initialize and then kind of do something. We don't do something yet. So let's do it. First, as we did with the random initializer, random generator in uh, lecture four or three, uh, get the S random to uh, initialize with some time value. So just time null. This will make random generator to be uh, a bit more random. Okay, so we have that path variable, Bezier path. So now let's actually initialize it. Uh, let's create a new NS Bezier path and uh, just get a new one like so. So this is equivalent of something that, like NS string string. So it's an alloc and init and some other stuff inside and get the width of that path. This is the path that we're going to paint with. So let's set a uh, line width to be something like 2.0. Let's create a point where we're going to start and as point. So we don't have a star here because this is not an object. This is a, a structure so self and let's get a random point we don't have it implemented yet but interface knows that it's there so it won't complain and now let's move our path to that point so get path move to point and pass it the p so now let's have a simple loop so int i and inside that loop, we're going to create new points and move the line to that new point and then go again. So it's, uh, oh, sorry, I is already there. Let's make it 20 and plus plus. So I'm just going to repeat this one, P, create a new random point. And now path, but instead of moving, I want to get the line to that point. So instead of just moving there, which will not draw anything, the coordinate will be changed, but nothing will change visually. I want to make line to that new point. So I want to have line to point and have P. Okay, so by this thing, we want to close the path. And this is something like when you work with files and you're done writing it to a file, you have to close it so that the system knows that we are done. And in sort of the same manner, we have to close the path. Okay, so we still don't have, and you can see this uh, thing, uh, the warning that we still don't have the random point implemented. So let's implement this. It returns NS point and it's called random point. So we create a new NS point, as I said, no star. And let's get the bounds of uh, the, the view itself because we don't want to create points outside the view. That will not make sense. Uh, so NS rect self dot bounds. So now let's make the result X. This is how you, if you don't remember from C, this is how you access structures, structure uh, the uh, 
variables inside the structure. So let's get from the bounds the origin and x. So this will get the first zero coordinate and add to it a random number but within the bounds. So let's typecast it to an integer and get the r, the size of our bounds and the width of the size. And do the same for x. Result y, yeah, not x, but y, r origin y, and add random number within the size by height. And of course, let's return the result. Result. Okay, so let's add a few other lines here. Now we just have this uh, fill and now I want to do this. I want this path to be white. So let's set in this color. White color. Set. So uh, we have that. And let's make the path to be stroke. Okay, so this should do it. If I just run, there, I see that stuff. And if I change the stroke, the stroke means line. And this will make the path uh, appear as line. I can also fill it. And you can just wonder how that works. What is the algorithm? Every time a new line is created, it tries to fill the area it covered. So we can see something like this. Okay, one last thing. Sometimes you need to put something inside another view, like a box or scroll view. You can just get a scroll view from here, put it on top, not actually on top, but somewhere, and then move the object inside the scroll view. But most of the time you want to embed something you already have and you just want, don't want to do this hassle. Luckily we have this thing in this menu, editor, embed in. So whenever you have something selected, you can embed it inside common elements like a box or some other custom view or scroll view. So in this case, let's do it in a scroll view. And now if the scroll view is selected, let's make it that that scroll view is resizable with the window, but the stretch view, let's click again, is not, then I should be able to see the scroll view like this. And now I see that those appear and I can sc scroll inside. Okay, so that wasn't the last thing. Let's talk actually about the last, last thing. Sometimes you want to create new views from the code, not in the interface. To do it, you can just create new NS objects from the code and it kind of looks obvious. So if I go to my app delegate and this is the code that runs when my whole application loads, actually finished launching. And this is a good place where we can kind of try to create a new view. So first I need to get the super view because I, I, I need to know in what view do I need to create a new view. So let's create a new NS view, call it super view. And I want to create a new button on my window. So let's get Inside the window, the first first view inside the window is content view, and I know I have it because this is how applications work. So I can get the window and content view. Uh, the thing is, it will complain because the window is a property. And again, when I was explaining properties in this course, I was using the older version of Xcode where properties behave differently. And 
we needed to use synthesize. Now, if you're using the Xcode 4.5, I think, well, actually, if you're just using the latest version of Xcode, you don't need to synthesize anymore. So anytime you create a property, those getters and setters are synthesized. And if you want to access the variable, you have to add the underscore. So this is how you access window, because if I go to my appdelegate.h, I see that window is actually a property. Okay, so I have my super view. So let's create a rectangle because this is the area where I want to put my my new button. And I'm just gonna create a new NS make rectangle and pass it something like uh, from the origin 1010 10, and then the size something like 100 by 100. And let's create a new button. Just like any other thing, you create a new button and call it button. And and this button unlock. And this is where you put that in it with frame and pass it a frame. So you pass the rectangle you just created. And here I have yeah, content TV, content view, like this. So let's set some title for this button. Set title and say, uh, hey. Now, the only thing we need to do is add this button to our super view. So we call super view, super view. And we want to add, of course, a subview because, well, NS button is a subclass of NS view and it's uh, another view. And pass it a button. Not, not a but, I'm sorry, a button. So if I run it, I will see this button appeared from the origin, which is uh, bottom left. Uh, start with 1010 10 from the origin and size 100 by 100. Okay, so this is it for lecture 11. Work on project three and see you next week.